rolling. All right, so welcome everybody to a house flipping case study. We're going to show you guys step by step how my buddy John found, financed, fixed, and flipped the home that you see below. This is what we like to call a bread and butter deal. Like you got to butter that bread. And to be honest, these are the properties that I cut my teeth on. These are the properties that I enjoy the most in terms of um, lifestyle and just ease of getting into and out of. I love properties like this because they are very, very safe in terms of, and I use that word lightly, but in terms of comparing these types of deals that are starter homes that are, you know, less than a hundred thousand dollars, or I'm sorry, slightly above a hundred thousand dollars ARV, but you can purchase them for less than a hundred thousand. They're three bedrooms, two bath, two car garage kind of deals. Like I love these deals. I love these deals because they have um, multiple exit strategies. You can rent them, you can flip them, you can owner finance them. Um, and like I said, you know, they're, they're good all around properties. So these are what we call the bread and butter deals. These are how I, you know, once again, cut my teeth and in our current market, this is, this is the type of properties that I've been going back to. I've been getting back to the basics in our business and just analyzing where I've made the most money at, where I've created the most wealth at, and it's with properties just like this. So I know a lot of you guys who are on know me and know of me, and, and that's really good, but there's a lot of people out there um, who don't know me. So I'm going to introduce myself uh, real quick. And so, whoops. So I have a company called Invest Home Pro. Uh, we specialize in real estate investments. We do investment property construction and, of course, educating. And these are all in the circle of the real estate investment world is what we specialize in, what we do. And that's my company, and, and I love it. Love what I do. Um, uh, why I do what I do? Mainly because of these guys. That's my family. Um, yes, that's there's four kids, believe it or not. And my lovely wife wants more. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I love my kids, but I don't know if I can take any more. Like, I love them. don't know if I can take them anymore. It's like cookies. Love cookies. You eat two or three or four. That's great. But you get to a certain point, it's like, oh, my God, I can't eat any more. I'm going to get sick. So <laughs> we're having the discussion now of whether or not to add number five. And if so, I think it's we're going to go the adoption route because my wife and I are both plus 40. All right? I'm just going to leave it like that. Plus 40, okay? I'm not going to get into too many details, but we're but we're above that 4-0 mark. All right. So um, I've also written a book. Not a very great graphic. I don't know what I put. But I wrote a book specifically on flipping homes because that's – in the world of real estate, that's the thing I'm most passionate about is actually flipping homes. Yes, I have rental properties, do wholesale deals, all that kind of stuff. We're actually building new homes now. But um, – Flipping homes has been my business passion, and uh, you may have seen me on the news. I've been called on the news several times in the local area just to go and speak about real estate and um, all that kind of stuff. And I do some crazy stuff too. Like recently, I got into a MMA cage fight. Believe it or not, the age of forty, and uh, yeah, like got into a cage fight. And I'm just I like to do. I like to do crazy stuff and challenge myself. And that's why, like, even though at the age of 40, whoops, even at the age of 40, I am currently uh, training for an Ironman. And uh, I ran a half Ironman uh, recently. And now I'm uh, actually training for a complete Ironman. So I'll be flying out to Idaho in just a few weeks to complete a full Ironman. And people say you're nuts, you're crazy. You've had three knee surgeries, ankle surgeries, all that kind of stuff. And um, I'm like, yeah, probably am, but I'm doing it anyways. Doing it anyways. So um, I also have an event called Breakthrough at the Beach. And this is uh, something that I'm very, very passionate about. 
something that I'm extremely passionate about. And what Breakthrough at the Beach is, it's an event where we combine um, real estate training uh, for men uh, over a three and a half day process down at the beach. Uh, we train men specifically on real estate investing, but we but we also teach some life skills and principles on how you can intertwine your business to create not only the ideal business, but the ideal life. Because one thing I've learned with real estate is that if you are, you know, stressed out or burned out in your job or what you're doing, like it's just not fun. And more importantly, if your life's not structured, um, if your life's not structured for, you know, long-term success, meaning you're not doing something that you're passionate about and something that you love, then you're going to have a hard time. Um, you're going to have a hard time sustaining, sustaining that success. And so what we do is we create an environment that allows men to not only, not only create wealth and create cash flow and do learn how to do deals in real estate, but we help them put it all together. So at the same time as they're building this business, they can also build a lifestyle that that is their ideal lifestyle and that's connected with their ideal business all at the same time. So that's what Breakthrough at the Beach is about. For those of you men who are interested, check it out when you have a chance. And without further ado, I'm about to get my man John on here. Um, however... He's still having issues, so give me just a second, and I'm going to introduce you to John. Whether or not he's here or not, you're about to all meet John, so here we go. Here's John Thaxton, and uh, I've known John for several years. He attended some of my events in the past, and uh, most recently he came to uh, came to Breakthrough at the Beach and um, went through that whole training and that whole process, but he is a, he's a pilot. And he's an Air Force Reserve. He's a fa uh, father of, I believe, a father of four. And, uh, of course, he's a real estate investor as well. And he is a real estate investor who's actually having some issues with his phone right now. And I'm extremely, extremely uh, sorry because I don't have him on. But hopefully he will be joining on soon to discuss this uh, with us. But whether or not John's here, we're going to dive into his deal. Um, so, all right. So anyways, there's a picture of John. I actually threw this on right before we got started down a breakthrough at the beach because he mentioned it, not to put it on. He's like, are you showing the one of my bloody nose? I'm like, you know what? I forgot about your bloody nose, bloody nose that you got at breakthrough at the beach. So I threw this picture on there. Um, he took a he took a solid right on the, on the nose. And there we go. Who have we there? John, look at that. Yeah. All right. Are you on, John? I think I'm on now. Yeah. Good. Oh, thank goodness. Well, you came at the right time. Uh, I got you. Your bloody, <laughs> bloody nose picture there. Um. So, well, John, all I did is uh, set you up, and uh, so I will hand the mic over to you just to uh, give a, a quick introduction of yourself so you can uh, let everyone know a little bit about you and about your life and kind of what's led us up to today where we're doing a webinar about you flipping a house and making some money. Okay. Well, I, uh, I've been involved in real estate for a couple of years now and as you can see from that picture I'm a uh, was an Air Force pilot still in reserves and I fly for an airline so in flying for the airlines, I get to hang out with some guys who uh, have some extra time on their hands and uh, do a lot of different things. You know, some guys are astronauts, some guys are attorneys on the side, and quite a few guys are into real estate. Uh, so about two years ago, I was hanging out with a guy who just done a couple rental properties, and uh, I was thinking about wanting to get into something that would uh, enable me to branch out from the stock market a little bit and. Um, get some new skills. If you know, I, I fly airplanes, I, I get the FAA to check me out uh, physically every year and if I fail a physical then I'm basically out of a job. So I wanted to uh, uh, to get something I could do to diversify my portfolio as well as to divor diversify my skill set. Um, so I started looking into real estate and you know, got in, 
and did some internet looking and got into Bigger Pockets forum and uh, I think you'd made a post there and I saw that you were from the Houston area. Yeah. Um, so I started reading your stuff and you know, long and short of it, I decided to uh, to get into it. Uh, looking for a flip, found a house that worked better as a rental, and uh, you guys did my first rehab um, about a year and a half ago. And uh, so since then, I was I, I've been uh, uh, gotten hooked, um, trying to do a fairly typical. Of, uh, find houses to uh, fix and flip, and uh, to, in order to turn off money for uh, buy and hold properties, um, started off working with uh, you know trying to find deals from uh, wholesalers, and, uh, and then last summer got involved in my own direct marketing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm moving in that direction now, but uh, that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. I've done uh, let's see one uh, rental property, um, two flips now. And uh, um, kind of been involved in some other real estate deals, and on the you know helping out with the church, buy some land, and set up financing and some stuff like that. So, so just kind of getting into it right now, and uh, definitely on the uh, on the beginner side of things. All right, well, awesome, man. Thank you for sharing, and uh, you know I think you came on, you saw uh, your glamour shot there from uh, breakthrough at the beach a little. Uh, a couple months back, so everyone can see with the busted, uh, busted nose. You should see the other guy, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. He was, he was doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you took some shots, man, but you kept coming, so that's kind of like the real estate world, man. We got to take our shots, but get back in the in the fight. So, all right, so let's talk about um, your deal. This is the Elmcroft deal. And uh, we're going to go over some basic numbers, so I'll throw those up and I'll let you uh, talk about these a little bit. Um, these are all, um, I think, solid. Your purchase price seventy two five. You purchased this end of February. Basically, it's almost the beginning of March, we could say. And the two questions here are two things I want to point out is, you know, the – I guess the two trickiest things to determine whenever, you know, analyzing deal is one is the ARV, although that's much easier in my opinion um, for your novice investors. And then for, I know beginning investors are the estimated repair costs where it gets a little bit even more tricky. So tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, the ARV, was that from your analysis or from wholesalers and tell me um, where you came, came up with that number. Well, the wholesaler uh, was advertising it at, I believe, a 115 ARV, um, and from checking on the MLS and uh, and Redfin and you know some other things like that, looking at uh, recent solds, that was, that was really solid. as a very conservative, solid ARV for that area um, at the time and for the size of house. Um, things were starting to trend up. There were several on the market that were pending that were in the upper 20, 120s, and but none of them had had a uh, a rehab like uh, you know like kind of like your typical uh, rehabs for this this level. Most of them were you know not rehabbed at all. Uh, yeah. So so I was I was thinking that I could I could stretch it a little bit. I was hoping to get 120, uh, 125 um, uh, for the ARV and you know, somewhere around 25 in the um, Repair costs was, was was kind of my estimate, but but I made a conscious decision, you know, knowing that there were a few different things that I could do in this scenario. I think I could have purchased it for seventy two and a half, and then just turned around and put it on the market for somewhere around ninety, and I think I probably could have gotten a buyer um, pretty quickly yeah. um, for that. But for you know, a combination of different different reasons, I made the conscious decision just to uh, rehab it to the top of the uh, of the neighborhood. And accept the risk of of being toward the top in the uh, in the ARV and uh, yeah. yeah that's so there's a some really good teaching points here and uh, and so one thing like you're right in this price point sometimes you can just you know close on these things and clean them out maybe spray some paint inside and and you could list it and probably made some pretty decent money on this one. Um, could have even been comparative of what you did make. Generally, the way we make the most as, of, as investors, I say generally, is you know doing a full rehab, and that's how we add the most value. 
But the other thing that's pretty interesting on this one is, you know, a lot of investors and um, my students and even myself sometimes uh, catch myself complaining about, you know, wholesalers sending deals out on their email blast. And, you know, they're always over estimating the, uh, the after repaired value, the ARV. And, uh, but there are exceptions to this rule. And sometimes people feel like they don't believe me, but I'm like, sometimes wholesalers get it wrong and they undervalue properties and it doesn't happen. It's like, if it's the 80, 20 rule, like it's definitely in the 20% range, if not the five to 10% range, whenever they do under, uh, estimate the value, but it does happen. One of my, uh, the second flip I ever did, I made 60 something thousand on it. And it was because a wholesaler grossly underestimated the value on that deal. Um, he would have accurately estimated it. His assignment fee would have been much, much more. But, um, the other, like the other thing that, that, uh, stands out to me is that, you know, this is, this is, uh, uh, you know, I want to pay you respect because when he put the, the ARV out there at 115, it most likely, you know, it was all based off of comps in that area. But you had the eye to see that, hey, these comps aren't really comparable in that, you know, a lot of them I'm assuming were a little bit outdated, a little bit dirty, lived in not a fully renovated property or almost fully renovated like you did. And that's another thing. We're actually going under contract on one today uh, that we looked at a couple of days ago, and it was a saw. It's a solid uh, one hundred forty thousand um, dollars ARV. But I'm looking at the comps. And I was, when I was looking at the comps, I noticed that a lot of the comps they're not rehabs. So I feel like we can push that. We could probably go one forty five, one fifty, um, mm -hmm. you know, at least because whenever we put ours on the market, it's like we're not the same as the $140,000 properties. We're much, much nicer and better. And uh, so yeah, there's a lot of really good teaching points already um, right here from the beginning. And uh, so tell me a little bit about how you uh, determine repair costs. Did you use calculators or just get bids? Kind of what was your strategy on that? I've done that. I've, I've put up together spreadsheets. I've used your rehab calculator in the past. I've, taken uh, estimates from you know the kind of the full service uh, wholesale outfits um, so those were kind of all going in the, in the back of my mind but really what I did on this was compare it to a bunch of actual bids several bids from you guys several from other uh, other uh, contractors um, on very similar houses and I it was almost like a combination of uh, you know a fairly, it was a fairly typical $70,000 deal in the $120,000 repair range that didn't need foundation and uh, you know might need a roof. And so it, it just kind of fit in there with some rehabs that I'd already priced out. So I didn't go line by line, look at every single uh, light socket, or, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, switch plate cover and, and whatnot. Um, to price the whole thing up, I, I it was kind of a TLR that looks about right type mm -hmm. estimate, but I was pretty confident in it based on uh, very similar houses. Um, so I, I was pretty pretty confident that within you know five thousand dollars or so, I was uh, I was pretty close. Yeah, it's after you, I mean, you know, even after just doing a few, like with me, you just kind of get I, I estimate most jobs in my head. Um, and that's all that I do uh, to make a decision on whether or not I'm going to purchase it. And then after I've actually made the uh, decision to purchase it, that's when I'm like, okay, let me verify these things. But it's just, you know, we use a uh, little, what I call blind formulas, blind offer formulas, and just have little cost per square foot on most things and then take into account the roof foundation they see. And that's just something that comes over time. I don't recommend people doing that in the beginning, but it does just kind of, um, come to you and it's like, yep, yeah, that kind of passes the smell test, common sense and good judgment. Yeah, it should be about there. Let's roll with it. And then you always make sure that there's enough, you know, meat on the bone if some things go wrong and, um, you can at least like dump it or, you know, maybe you don't make 15 or 25,000, you make like five or something. Right. So let's um, talk about, I'm sorry, do you want to say something? 
Well, it's kind of a product too of of looking at thousands of these and and then running numbers probably on hundreds of them over the past couple of years and just doing it over and over again and getting kind of familiar so that by the time a deal came over the uh, you know over the email, I was like, yeah, I can tell that's a deal right now and. I don't have to really think about it. I don't have to start from from a square one of um, you know taking taking you know four or five hours to decide if that's a real deal or not. I've, I've looked at so many that were so similar. Um, I could pretty much tell that hey, I, I think this is pretty much a, a deal here, so I can act fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about and you mentioned a little bit about um, finding the deal, like. What was your strategy um, on this one? I know it came from a wholesaler, but I do want to talk about, you know, what led to, was there a previous relationship there with the wholesaler? Meaning, was it just an email blast or had you been like talking to this particular wholesaler? Because I know sometimes it's, you know, you have to cultivate relationships with wholesalers. And so tell me just a little bit about this one. Well, the, uh, this wholesaler works for an, another guy who is. Uh, um, I heard him on a national podcast uh, a year and a half ago or so, and then uh, I reached out to him, um, you know, just through that platform. And uh, you know, he went to the same school I went to, uh, you know, a few years after I did, and um, and you know, in the, in the same area. So we just kind of touched base with him on the uh, uh, through email. And then got on his list, and I hadn't really truly seen anything that was, um, you know, super appealing from them. But then, you know, so I was getting emails from like, you know, probably 20 or 30 different wholesalers. I, you know, somehow you just get on these lists. I don't know exactly how that happens, but um, they they were coming to. So uh, that's kind of that's kind of how it happened. It just happened to come across my desk, and it turned out that uh, this guy. Um, you know, they were definitely a breath of fresh air to, to work with in the in the wholesale realm because they they mostly you know they have a very similar mindset to to you in the real estate business and uh, they mostly do their own rehabs and have just started to do some uh, uh, wholesaling of deals that maybe are outside of their normal area um, but just very professional guys very easy to work with and um, yeah that's just and I got the email, and I just happened to happen to see it, and you know, see that that was a deal, and was able to be the first per people to call them, and first first guy to go see the property. Yeah, I I prefer working with wholesalers that also do investing themselves, and sometimes you know, investors will say, well, if, if it's such a good deal, why didn't they just do it? Why didn't the wholesaler do it? And sometimes you'll get a deal from an agent, and They'll say, if it's such a good deal, why isn't the agent doing it? And the fact of the matter is, is one, like for a lot of wholesalers, even other investors and, and real estate agents for sure, I mean, they still need to put food on the table. And so if they can make a quick three to 5000 or 10000 on an assignment fee, you know, that's money they get right now versus waiting two to three months to, you know, make 15, 20 or 30000 or 40000 what have you. And then sometimes with uh, investors, is who also wholesale because we do the same thing. Sometimes it's just we've got a lot of capital tied up. We maybe we have five, ten projects going on. Maybe, maybe they're big projects. We might have like a couple of million dollars um, in construction going on, so we can't do every deal and we make a little assignment fee. It just like that's what we do sometimes. So the the, the theory that oh it's not a good deal because they don't want to do it to me it doesn't apply at all because sometimes it's just they don't have the capital or the resources or the bandwidth to do those deals at that particular time. And uh, yeah. And of course, of course, if you can work with honest, ethical people who, um, you know, are helping create win-win relationships, like it makes it all the better. So I'm not going to call anybody out, but we know that there's some wholesalers out there that don't always adhere to that code of, uh, honest and ethical. So we got to look over our shoulders with uh, each of these guys and do the Ronald Reagan trust, but verify thing, because I know um, someone asked a question about is if we can ask a wholesaler for the rehab estimate and the answer is absolutely yes. You know, a good wholesaler will help provide 
a general analysis of the rehab costs, but like, we're not going to take that as a gospel. Like it's up to us to do our own due diligence. So let's talk about your funding, how you finance the deal. And, uh, you've set, so I think you, I don't know if you set the record, but you've at least tied the record for, um, combining, uh, finances to, <laughs> to get a deal done. So I commend you for that. And I love this, like you use a little bit of cash, you used a home equity line of credit as well as a credit card. And I love it, man. Like I love it. Here it is all laid out. Make sure you might want to verify these numbers, but I think I, I think I have them correct. Yeah, that's, I, I kind of assumed it was about 4% for the credit card because there was a, 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 a line of credit. convenience credit. fee, so to speak, for, for using that. But, uh. I think it was like 18 months, zero in interest, but it. I think it was like three or four hundred dollars to, um, to use it. So yeah, it's awesome, man. Like that's you know, and I could have, uh, you know, I didn't really need to throw that credit card in the mix there, but, uh, um, I was sitting at home one afternoon, and I know it's it can be kind of, it can be dangerous, so I don't necessarily recommend it. But I was like, I hadn't really done anything on offense that day, and I wanted to do something on offense just about every day is kind of how I put it. Mm -hmm. So I, I figured I'd sit down for an hour and, and see what I could do about lining up some uh, zero interest credit cards. And, uh, and just within, uh, within an hour or so, I, uh, I came up with about $37,000 of, uh, in four zero interest credit cards. Um, that at least I had available. I don't know if I'll use them all, but I wanted to, to, uh, to tap into some of that, um, for now in a, in a conservative way, but, but op open some of that up. So, so yeah, it's, uh, um, cash in the, in the HELOC and, uh, and a little bit of credit card in there just for the heck of it. So, so for me, it makes total sense. And I always, you know, go back to the very first deal that I ever did was like, I used a credit card to buy my first investment property because I didn't have any money. <laughs> We're broke living in that apartment and I wanted to do real estate. And the first deal I bought required a down payment of about 7000 and borrowed about $14,000, uh, 0% interest and kind of deal. And fortunately, like I, like I realized like, oh, at this rate, I can buy two houses and I'm done. So I got real creative and you know figured out a way to buy number two with no money down and kept buying no money down after that point. But, you know. I'm always careful. I'm like, oh, I don't recommend that you buy houses, use your credit card to buy houses. But I got to say, if you've got good credit and you can get 0% interest on credit cards, like I still use mine to this day. Like we have a, uh, we have a line of credit, we have a business line of credit. And so every now and then we'll tap into that. And we got this pretty substantial amount of 0% interest credit cards. So when we get real heavy and in the thick of things with all kinds of projects going around, like I'd rather borrow fifty to a hundred thousand dollars off zero percent interest credit cards and pay that little two to four hundred dollar fee, whatever it is, and have zero percent interest, even than I would, you know, work with my private lenders paying seven to ten percent. So to me, it just makes sense. It it just makes sense. Some things I wasn't sure of, you know, when I when I opened up several of those is, was. Uh, you know, maybe if I was doing a different deal, the the threat I was seeing was, hey, how's this going to affect my ability to refinance out of the uh, out of the house if I needed to? Um, I wasn't really worried about that in, in this particular situation, so I just, you know, accepted that. Um, yeah, that's something you have to take in mind. Like, say for example, if you you know were looking to purchase a new home or a different home, like for your personal home, or you're going through refinance process with with uh, investment properties or anything like where you know that your credit's going to be scrutinized, then you got to be careful. Um, you know, I'm not like we're, we're planted here and I just, I do real estate and run my business and plant it in our home. So I don't use my credit for anything. Um, so for me, it makes sense, but yeah, that's a good point. Just like make sure that there's no other little um, issues that it may um, affect uh, on down the road. Because whenever you do open up a whole bunch of lines and things like that, it will, it will, uh, you know, affect your credit score there for a while. But the funny thing is I found out is that over time, and don't quote me on this, like get a, you know, credit counselor or whatever, 
But when you have um, like lines of credit open and credit cards, you know, the longer that they're there, like the more your, your score goes up. And anyways, don't want to really want to get into that conversation. So I'll hush, but no, I love the, uh, I love the structure, man. Like I love the structure. Like I said, if you could have thrown just one more in there though, you could have set the record for our webinar financing, like have four different financing options, but but you tied the well, right. I will next time because my, my son wants to invest his lawn mowing money to the tune of about a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars next on the next project that uh, that we do. So there you go. So he'll be, he'll be my private one of my private investors on the next one. I love it, man. Like that's what I do with my kids all the time. I'm like, ask them like, so like if they make some money, they get like birthday money. I'm like, do you want to use it and spend it, or do you want to invest it? My kids usually just want to spend it though, so I haven't figured it. Out. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, so, oops. All right, so we're going to talk about the uh, the rehab now. I'm going to show everyone some, just run through a slideshow of pictures. You want me to stop any of these to point out anything? Just let me know, but we'll let this run through a few times. But, you know, like I started, I know you weren't, I don't know if you could hear at the beginning, but I told everybody that this was a bread and butter kind of deal. It was the old proverbial, you know, beige. Paint everything beige, and that's that's one of our mottos with, you know, when we do construction and our own flips in this this price point, this this style of home, is we always like to say that you can have any color you want as long as it's beige because right. you know that beige works. It works for the walls. It, it works for the countertops. It works for the flooring like the carpet, and we're going to keep on using beige just because it works. We even painted on the ceiling page. Um, so, yeah, so give everyone kind of your perspective on on the rehab, um, you know, fears, worries, concerns, and kind of just kind of what actually happened in the process. The, uh, the bones of the house were really good. We, uh, the roof, I was, you know, slightly concerned about, but, you know the air conditioner was fine. It, it seemed to be the uh, the foundation, which was uh, uh, one of the, one of the biggest things I was kind of expecting would need to be done. Was um, uh, seemed fine. So uh, we just proceed. I, you know, I didn't get an you know evaluation or anything like that. I just proceeded as if it was good to go and uh, and then and went for it. But yeah, I just wanted to do a um, the basic rehab, kind of like uh, you'd shown one in Southeast Houston. Uh, um, just you know, south of 45, inside the Sam Houston, yeah. um, that I saw right before I pulled the trigger on this one. I'm like, okay, that's what I want to do. Yeah, um, that looks good. And uh, yeah, and we've yeah, we just we've been doing this for years as well. We've been doing it for years as well. Let it play again. Um, so I know you ended up using Invest Home Pro, but did you did you get other bids on the property? Uh, no, didn't get any other bids on on this one. I'd had other bids on some some similar houses, you know, a year ago or so. Um, and for the uh, you know the level of uh, of service and you guys having your stuff together and just my my trust for you guys, you and Chris, and um, it, it seemed reasonable. Um, I, I know I could have gotten it done for quite a bit less somewhere, but I'm sure that you know I would have had some other issues that. Uh, I would have had to take care of, and I just didn't want to didn't want to deal with with that. Uh, you know, paying a, you know maybe a little bit more for for you guys or a comparable outfit um, meant that at least for this project, I kind of got to have Chris Atkins as my project manager uh, yeah. without having to really have him on my payroll. So yeah, um, that like was worth it for me. Free education and mentoring, right there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so well, one is. If I were your coach, I would say still get some bids, uh, right, right. especially in the beginning, just to educate yourself. Um, and you learn things like, you know, the old adage, like you learn something new every day. Well, you learn something new every rehab, that's for sure. And then you learn something just talking to other rehabbers and contractors and seeing other bids and things like that. You get different perspectives. But, um, yeah, so, I, I mean, I appreciate course the trust and the business of course but my my thing is what I always tell people is because there's a couple other 
companies in, in our market that's, you know, similar to us in terms of service and product and quality and, and even pricing in which pretty much those are the three, three main things you're looking for from a contractor is you want to, you know, make sure that it falls in line with your budget, uh, the time frame and the quality. And, uh, but that being said, you know, said that you may could have gotten it done a little bit cheaper with some other, uh, other investors. I want to talk about the roof in just a second, but with, you could have gotten it cheaper with other contractors, I should say, but the, the other side of that, uh, coin, and this is where, you know, we get a lot of calls from is from a lot of investors who will go like the cheap route and they will, they will go with the cheapest contractor they can find or one of the lower quotes trying to save money. And I get that. But a lot of times they end up costing themselves money because either one of those three things, either the, the budget, um, or I'm sorry, most likely the, the quality of the work is subpar or the time, the timing, like instead of doing something in a month or two months, like they double or triple that time and that ends up costing them. And then in the budget part is not usually, you know, their quote is their quote, but a lot of the less professional kind of shade tree contractors, if you will, like they, they're usually not thorough on the bid. And so they end up uh, having more change orders or like, Oh, well that wasn't included. And there's all this misunderstanding, et cetera, et cetera. So one thing I want to point out on this rehab though, is that that was the, the roof when we started and we ended up just leave, we leave this roof and then just uh, pressure and cleaned it. Correct. Uh, yeah, I think we replaced the the ridge shingles. Yeah, and so whoops. So I really want to show this to them, and this is where you know inexperienced investors may end up costing themselves a lot more money. We we try to act as you know not only as as contractors, but really just consultants to help you know navigate all the decisions that have to be made. And this is a big one. Like a lot of investors would see a roof like this and they're like, oh my gosh, the roof's got to be replaced. So what we did is uh, any point like the apex up here at the top, like these are ridge shingles at the top. And those are generally the most worn and they're what um, show up on inspection reports as like having the most damage. And so what we do a lot of times, if the work, if the roof is acceptable and for us acceptable is if it has at least like three to five more years left on the shingles we'll send a roof over there to assess it he's been with us a long time always gives us an honest opinion like no nope, this roof's got to go and a lot of times he's like no it's fine it doesn't look so good just clean it so we hire a professional roof cleaning company to come over and chemical wash it and so we replaced all the ridge shingles and it's okay that is the same roof after so you can see something like that, that there alone is several thousand dollars in savings and without compromising the product, without compromising the product whatsoever. Right. So that's a, that's a big savings and a big, a big lesson, you know, for everyone out there watching is that sometimes a roof is just a little bit dirty with a good cleaning. Like you can do some right. transformation. I think that really set the people who, you know, Set, set at ease the people who came to look at it. I mean, look at the, you can kind of see the house to the right, you know, dark and, you know, kind of like yeah. the before picture. And uh, same with the house on the other side and all the others in the neighborhood. So this this really stood out in the in the neighborhood. Um, and like, so some investors would just not, like, even if, like if the roof was in its previous condition, like, we're not going to change it, they wouldn't even go to the extent to clean it. But you can see what a big impact that is. We try to look at every dollar that we're spending like what is the return on the investment for this dollar and I think that's a big return on that so let's talk about um, the strategy of listing it and marketing it and I can't recall do you, I believe you have your license I do um, yeah as I was doing this I was kind of telling myself that this is my uh, my real estate agent boot camp house too because uh, the first one I listed as an agent, just got my license back in the fall. Uh, so yeah, put it on the MLS, and uh, um, and that was pretty much the extent of the marketing. And 
and there was a, what I think what helped me is that about a week before um, I put we put this on the market, uh, an investor put another one that was slightly bigger, a um, few streets south in the neighborhood, with a with a comparable uh, rehab on it. They put that on the market for 162,000, um, which was like way overboard for that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and then this comes in um, looking better on the inside, ever you know slightly smaller. Um, but at you know 134 is what I listed it at, and uh, so it got a lot of action right away. Just within 12 hours, I think I had five or six offers. Um, wow. All those were full, full price on it. I'm sorry, 24 hours. Yeah, full uh, six full price offers, and then one uh, one slightly over full price for cash. Uh, and that was uh, that was just within the uh, yeah that first week. Um, the that first offer was uh, I didn't have a super good feeling about the uh, the agent um, who brought it to me, and sure enough, uh, I guess three days later um, they ended up backing out of it, uh -huh. and uh, I you know I told myself beforehand that um, kind of hang on to that loosely we'll we'll yeah. see we'll see what happens here, yeah. um, so it wasn't like uh, you know it wasn't a super big deal when it happened. Um, but yeah, they backed out. Turns out, I think she had just been locking up probably a, a couple or three houses with uh, um, to give uh, her clients time to figure out what they were doing, and and finally some other agent brought her clients a house anyway. So, um, but the very next day, uh, I just you know the, called some of the agents who'd uh, showed interest uh, initially, and uh, one of them uh, said he had a cash buyer, uh, and uh, that afternoon we had a an offer for uh, 132, um, and once again that was a, a cash deal, so um, slightly under my asking price. But I think you say uh, fast nickels over slow dimes and cash, and uh, so I was fine with that. My my profit target when I enter a deal, at least for now, and you know, uh, has been about fifteen thousand dollars that I like to see before I. Pull the trigger on a deal, um, fifteen thousand dollars or ten percent of the ARV, mm -hmm. and uh, and this was going to be a little bit above that. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we went with it. They did a they did the inspection, and you know the inspection. Of course, uh, inspectors are going to find uh, quite a few issues, and then the agent it was pretty good at embellishing those too, and. Uh, um, they wanted to reduce it by a couple thousand dollars, and they'd be okay. Um, so I went ahead and hey, if we can uh, move the close up to yesterday, um, I just went ahead and well, said I'm fine with that. That's okay, close enough. Yeah, it was yeah. just a little over three months. I think 90, less than 100 days, 97, 98 days. Yeah, 97 days, and uh, um, so you know, kind of. Just internally, some of the things you know, you have a little you know fear every now and then, and you know what if this and what if that, and uh, that was probably the first reaction when I saw this long laundry list of items they came up with on the inspection, and uh, you know maybe they're going to back out, maybe they're not. Uh, you know, you drop the price two grand, we'll stay in. Um, no, we you know, just you know that's just natural. Take a deep breath and um, and then just you know keep moving forward. Yeah. No, inspection reports, we don't have time to go into it today, but I've got a whole strategy on how we handle those, and there's really a psychology that goes into uh, inspection reports from the buyer side and our side, the seller side, on how we handle those. And uh, But, you know, a couple thousand is not great, but it's not too bad. And one thing I want to t talk about is you touched on it, um, and I want to make sure everyone got it because what – you mentioned just a second ago to me is why flipping flipping houses is really the perfect business model when it's executed properly. And you mentioned, you know, there was a pri there was a house listed for one sixty something. It was not only overpriced, but you had a better product. And so what like really gets my my juices going with with flipping houses, if you look at it, like you look at it, 
when the, the business model is executed properly like you did, it's like one as we go in, when we buy our home, we're buying it cheaper, most likely than any other home in the property. Um, and we're buying it, buying them super cheap. And then we go in and we, we put in, you know, we do the rehab, which, you know, adds all the value. And then even after, you know, we've purchased it and done, done all the rehab, we can still sell our, our homes cheaper if we choose than all of our competition. And that's, that's something that, you know, I, I want everyone to understand is that you can't do that. You can't do that in most businesses, in most markets. You can't have a better product and sell it cheaper. And that's, it's such a huge, like, aha moment. It's like, it's such a big light bulb moment when you get that. It's like, oh my gosh. Like, if, if you're, if you execute properly, you're patient enough to, you know, pass on some of the bad deals and you wait for the right ones, like a deal like, like this in Elmcroft, it's, it really, it's a no brainer. And it's, it's like, why would anyone not do this deal when you can buy it? cheaper than all the other houses, fix it up and then still sell it and make, you know, 17, $18,000. And who knows, like you probably could have like in hindsight and hindsight, I like to say, yeah, you probably could have pushed it and gone a little bit more. But yeah. sometimes you may have just priced it exactly right. You may have hit the sweet spot. I think so. Um, and actually I ran my numbers a little bit better last night. I, I hit right at 18,000. So that was kind of that was kind of cool, um, on the profit. But uh, the well, I was a little bit concerned about a lot better if I could have said 18k, but that's okay. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, the uh, I was a little bit concerned about the uh, the appraisal. So that was that's an area that I want to learn more about in the future. And uh, uh, most of my offers were either FHA or or low down payment uh, conventional. Yeah. Um, so, here, so I just kind of didn't want to press the test too far in that direction, but yeah. So here's the deal with appraisals, um, and it's a legitimate concern. But guess what? So let's say, let's say for example, if you wanted to price it at 145, and there's no comps, there's no comps in there to justify that price. Appraisal comes back. Appraisal comes back at 135. Okay, so you'd still be happy at 135. You're only at 132. But two, one of two things can happen is one is your buyer, hopefully they have um, enough money to put down to cover that, that spread. Um, if not, you can just, you can drop your price. You can be like, oh, well, I took my shot. Like you can lower the price and like you could give them a concession, just lower it to 132 or 135 or whatever the appraisal is. What we've done recently, because we've been pushing price points in these areas and we've been setting comps, but you're right, the appraisals don't always come back. And we had that happen recently, and it was about, I think we we're about $8,000 higher than the appraisal came back. And so we split the difference. We dropped the price 4000 but they came up 4000 So, like, to me, like, that's something, if I feel it's like pushing the price like that, I don't want to extend the days on the market like super long like we like to have contracts in the first couple of weeks on deals like this but if i feel it's reasonable we get a good pulse from the market then we'll go ahead and uh we'll toss it out there and see what happens but um nothing wrong with your strategy man like i think you executed like a champ and uh results are all that matter <laughs> what results are all that matter and end up being eighteen thousand. so that's even even better so so everyone i want y'all to pay i want to show, share something with you about you know everything that you've seen in this video and there's a few things that i believe that john has experienced that are become like we call them x factors to creating success in the business world and there's several things like the four things that really help to create success other than just like a, B, C, one, two, three, like step by step. That's great. But all this, what you just saw, like with John's case study, it came about because he got his mindset determined. Like he's like, look, here's where I'm at. 
and got, you know, if I fail a physical at work, I may be out of a job, tired of the stock market, don't trust the stock market. I've got to do something else. And he just became determined, like, I'm going to learn, uh, I'm going to learn real estate. Like I'm going to, I'm going to hop into that and, uh, and give that a shot. And that's, that's exactly what, what he did was he like went into it with like a determined mindset. And that's one of the keys. And if y'all, if everyone's, if you've got a notepad and pen, like you might want to write this down. Like I'm going to give you the four X factors of success. And it starts with the mindset. But yes, like you do have to have skill sets also. Like what are the skill sets necessary to succeed in the real estate game, in business in general? And you need those skill sets. And you also need to know how to leverage the skill sets of others. You saw in this like John – Leverage the skill sets of Invest Home Pro to help with his with his rehab. He leveraged the skill sets of a good wholesaler to bring him a good deal. Okay, doesn't mean that you need to know all the ins and outs and all the details of every single skill set there is to know with real estate, but you do need to know a general overview uh, knowledge of what need is needed to be done to create success. So after mindset and skill set, like. Those are fairly common, like, wow, like nothing big there. But what I think a lot of people lose uh, perspective of is the importance of being involved and in being in the right environment to help create your success. Okay. And what I'm talking about now is associations, like who are you associated with and affiliated with that you can call to, like who is on your team that can um, help you when you get stuck. You know, who is there someone there pushing you? Is there someone there to encourage you? You know, where, where is it that, um, that you go to? Like if you have a problem and if you're really, really committed to creating something like, what is the environment that you're around that's going to help you get to that place? Right. It's kind of like the old adage, iron sharpens iron. And then also success requires accountability, like putting out your goals there to a group or some other people to say, hey, this is what I want to do. And this is what I'm, you know, I'm pushing for. So other people can see that and hold you accountable. And then something just happens different when we put our goals out to the world and say, like, I declare this is what I'm going to do. And you put it out there and you take action on it, especially when others are holding you accountable. So those are what I call the four X factors of success, mindset, skill set, and environment and accountability. And of course, when we're talking about skill sets, like there, there are seven fundamentals, um, just like my book that talked about the seven fundamentals um, of a successful real estate deal. Like this is where you get into the nuts and bolts. And these, the, the graphic that you see there is, is basically what John executed upon. Like he started with a determined mindset. He created deal flow from some of his own marketing and, and wholesalers, getting emails. He was able to evaluate and analyze the deal to determine like, yep, this is a good deal. I'm going to move forward on that. You know, he was able to estimate the repairs, to estimate them actually very, very accurately. He was able to put together his financing, structure financing. Moved into the rehab phase with a, a turnkey general contractor versus managing the deal himself. And then ultimately, like, he ended up in the income generation phase. In this particular property, he flipped. He could have rented it. He could have sold it on a finance. There's a lot of things he could have done, but that was his strategy. And he executed it properly by following the seven fundamentals. So... What I want you guys to consider is like, just think for a second about being coached by myself and my team. You mentioned Chris as a uh, member of my team and being coached by us on a daily basis with all the real estate investing information you ever need to know so, around these seven fundamentals, like being teach, taught every day about mindset, deal flow, evaluating deals, estimating repairs, financing, rehab, and uh, actually making money, income generation. At the end of the day. So what I've done is I created a training experience that's conducive to your success by combining it with the most ideal format, the content, the right environment, and the right pace. 
in the right pace because there is a lot to learn when it comes to real estate. You know, John mentioned he's been doing this for uh, several years, so it doesn't happen overnight. Okay, so the pace of, of, of the content and as well as the format, watching a video versus reading a book. Like the, the video format is so effective in teaching because we can demonstrate with words, uh, we can like verbal spoken words and show you pictures and graphs and, and of actual properties. So once again, I just want you to imagine like being guided along in this path to creating your real estate success without being overwhelmed. Like I talked about the right pace, just doing one lesson per day. Anyone can do that. Some lessons are 10 minutes, some are 20 minutes long. Like not a lot of time, but every single day, every single day you're getting this information. And there's a myth out there that talks about it. It's only like 21 days to create a habit. But the truth is, if you like deep dive into the science, it takes about 60 to 70 days to create a habit. So imagine taking 10 to 20 minutes a day, learning a new real estate lesson where you'll be in a few months from now. Like you'll be so ingrained, like daily learning and that knowledge is just going to be there. And so a training that we've provided has over 100 real estate lessons. We have private interviews. We've got dozens of forms, everything that you'll ever need along with some other things I want to share with you. Um, and these lessons, what they do is they, they systematically dive deep, dive deep into all the seven fundamentals. And we do this with the program I've created. It's called the F7X Factor. The F7X Factor. It's the seven fundamentals included with the X factors that help create your success. And this is an online training program but we've included some things that will help you out with the environment and the accountability side. So this is actually a screenshot of what the members area looks like. And you can see on the left um, how we have, have all the video training. And all these trainings that you see on the left are actual videos of myself and some of my team members, but mostly me, uh, teaching on different things, all the fundamentals that you need to know about. Um, we actually have video training where like we're at properties, walking through homes, you know, estimating repairs, just talking about rehabs and like vid live video training showing you exactly um, what it is that's required as a real estate investor. But not just talking about it, not just giving you a book, but like actually out there doing it. And you can do this, like I said, just watching it from your home. We have forms that you'll need, you know, like. To me, the forms that you need in real estate is sometimes people get overwhelmed. They think they need all these forms. There's really only a handful of forms that you need, but we give you everything that you can possibly need uh, in terms of forms, um, especially um, the really, really, really good ones and the really important ones. Um, we have some forms in here that uh, no one else has that we don't release these to the general public, um, but you guys in uh, the F7X factor, the only one that gets um, access to these, you guys and my private coaching students. We do interviews with other successful investors. These are interviews that we don't put out everywhere. So you can see what's working not only in our business and what we're doing, but I'm always networking. I'm masterminding with other successful investors, and I'll bring them in to the F7X factor to share some of their success and what they're doing. So I've talked about the environment and the accountability as well. So one of the ways, uh, one of the things that we've done is we've created a private Facebook group so that you guys can interact with everybody. You know, everyone's in there posting. We get posts probably every single day of people just sharing things like, hey, I found this deal. I've got this deal to sell. Hey, what are you all doing for private money? You know, what kind of success are you having? Just cultivating an environment um, that's conducive to help you succeed by sharing with others, learning from others, getting motivated by others. Sometimes you're just frustrated, like, hey, I'm stuck here. Someone help me out. And then you get, boom, someone will post something. Like just a couple of days ago, you see this post. It says, after about two months of taking action, I finally received my first check off a wholesale deal. I'm halfway to meeting the goal that I set for myself since starting the program. I just want to encourage everyone in the group to keep pushing forward and never give up. Good things will happen. Thanks, Brent Phillips, for your teachings. 
So this is a member that joined just a couple of months ago and he's already cashing check for eight thousand dollars. I want you to understand and realize how important an environment like that is. And people will actually go into the group and post some of their their personal goals for accountability purposes, to share with others, to be motivated and inspired and encouraged by others. And I can't tell you the importance of having this environment because a lot of online programs just have training. They only they only help you improve your skill set. And that's it. But when you combine these other X factors, I like to call them, like that's what you need to create a profitable and sustainable business over the long term. And that's what we've put together in the F7 X factor. So something else we do, we do monthly webinar training. So you can ask all the questions that you want to ask. And we spend time, like everybody gets on a webinar and we go over all the questions. We do different training, kind of outside the box training. You know, whatever it is that you need, wherever you're stuck, you send us your questions in and we go over all those questions to answer to make sure that, that you're not stuck. Because what you begin to see is whenever you have the determined mindset and the right skill sets, and then you combine that with environment and accountability, like the real estate's not so difficult. It's not. Um, it's not. Anyone can, anyone can create success in real estate. And I believe that um, real estate is like it's set up. It's set up for people who are willing, willing to do the work and um, just stay committed that success is available to everyone. And I believe that I believe that you guys not only like whether you were to come into the F7 X factor or not, like there we live in the information age. There's tons of information, books, webinars, training where you can go out and get all the information that you'll ever need to learn how to do real estate. And you don't need the F7 X factor um, in terms of learning the information. And so like I have to be honest with that because some people try to sell programs like you have to have this secret pill, this little ingredient, the magic red pill. Take this and everything's quick, fast, and easy. And truth is not. Truth, it's not. But what I've found is that when you're involved in a program like the F7X Factor, what this can do is speed up your success rapidly. Like you saw the post on Facebook, just after a couple of months, he made $8,000. So understand that whenever you invest into a coaching program or a training program, the most important thing is, is that program going to speed up your success and help you to avoid some of the pitfalls that you may have went through? Because I've went through all the pitfalls and the pitfalls aren't fun because I didn't always invest in coaching and mentoring like I do now. I invest a lot in my personal and business coaching and mentoring and so that's what I want you to understand is a program like this, whether you join this program or another program, it's that when you're in the right program with the right coaching, the right environment, the right accountability, that you can tremendously speed up your success and your results. And that's what good coaching should do. So by the end, for those of you who, who join the F7 X Factor, by the end of the experience and the training, it's so formulaic and simplified that not only are you going to be able to create results, you'll be able to actually go out and train and coach others if that's, you know, if that's something you feel called to do. But the most important thing, the way that we teach, like I want to equip you that you know everything that I do. I just know that I can't do that over a weekend at a seminar or a boot camp or even in a book. But after three or four months, like over a hundred lessons, like of me just talking to and sharing with you, like my intent is to teach you everything that I know. I just know I can't do it in, you know, over a day or two or in a webinar. I can only teach you like a little tip of the iceberg kind of stuff like we covered in this webinar. So I know a lot of you want to uh, know about this. So uh, the cost So the cost is $97. It's $97 for you to join and $97 a month after that. Okay. Dirt cheap. Dirt cheap is the way that I feel about this pricing right now, but you have to understand, like, we just created this program a few months ago, so it's in a beta phase. Like, we're, we're building it out, 
and it's it's pretty much built out at this point. We're making a few tweaks and uh, going to make it even better. I'm sorry, we're making this a better deal than most likely we're ever going to be offered again. Because after we make these few tweaks and with the training and some things that we're doing and we're still adding, we're going to increase the activation fee and the monthly subscription fee. But for those of you who are part of this training right now, if you want to get in for $97, you can do that. Um, so for those of you who are interested, like what do you want to, how, how can you apply? You can go to the website that you see there. And once you sign up and once you join, um, you make your payment, you are going to get instant access. Like the training starts, uh, the training starts right away. Not a week from now, like right away, uh, the training will start. But I want to tell you and I want to talk to you about something is, is just begin to imagine, you know, what your life and your real estate business would look like if you join, you know, to join this program and you just start to follow the, the daily steps. Like I said, we're not going to throw a lot at you. It's, it's just daily steps. And not only that, for 97 bucks, I mean, first off, it's 97 bucks. Um, John just made 18000 John's a member of the F7X Factor. Montel just made $8,000. He's a member of the F7X Factor. And so with your investment of $97 a month, I want you to know that your satisfaction is guaranteed. You can take the entire class. You can put it to work. You can download everything. And if you decide it's not right for you, like, let me, I'll issue you a full refund. Like, if you don't think that you've gotten the value and everything that I've um, told you that you would get, just let me know and I will refund you. And no questions asked. We're not going to be knocking on your door or setting up a call. Like, that's it. Like, I get it, man. Like, you didn't, I didn't produce and that's fair enough. You can keep everything. Like, you can download all the forms and all that kind of stuff and the training and keep it if, if that's what you choose to do. So just to recap, so what you're going to get when you join today is you're going to get in-depth training, video training on the seven fundamentals. You're going to get all the training, the videos, forms, spreadsheets. I have live event replays, live event replays of private money webinars. I'm sorry, live uh, events from me talking all about raising private money. We've got templates. We've got things that you can use to present to private lenders. We've got other live event replays in here that you can watch at your own pace. Once again, like we have monthly live training webinars. You can send all your questions into there. I'll answer them personally. We have the private Facebook group access. Uh, you're getting beta phase pricing now, and that, that fee will not change. We won't raise it on you. It will stay that for as long as you're a member, and we're offering the full money back guarantee. And just remember, like, take the whole class, download everything, put it to work. It takes an extra month if you want to test it. If you aren't satisfied, you keep it. You get your money back. No questions asked. And so one last thing, like, this is very, very important. So I created this program with your success in mind. Like, this is what I did. I went to the drawing board to think, uh, think about what is a way that I can honestly and truly create a program where we could get – 100% success of everyone who is a part of that program and is doing act, taking action and doing the work. And I knew that just cramming you with a bunch of information, just information overload, da 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 da, like that's not conducive to learning. So that being said, for the first 90 days, we don't want to overwhelm anyone. We don't want anyone going too fast. So with this beta pricing, and even after the beta pricing, we're most likely going to keep the structure. We provide access to one new lesson per day. That's it. You get emailed a lesson. After each lesson's released, you'll have access to it from there on as long as you're a member of the group. So I want to make sure that makes sense to everybody. You get one lesson a day, and with each lesson, here's the thing. If I, give you, if I were to give you hours of training every day, Guess what? You're just able to sit and listen to, to the training, listen to me talk. But you may not necessarily have the time to take action. So the way we've structured it is you get a one lesson a day, usually 10 to 30 minutes long. But then that should provide you enough time to go out and take some action, meaning you watch the lesson. Like there's a lot of follow up that's involved sometimes. Like you may need to send out some emails or make some phone calls or go, you know, download one of the, the reports that we have or spreadsheets and you can begin to get familiar with it and actually build your business. 
Because if you're just taking in information, you're not building a business. You're taking in information. And that's not what we want. We do want everyone who's a part of our group to have 100% success. Here's what you got to do next. Just go to www.f7xfactor.com slash join. Um, just click on the add to cart button, make your payment, and get ready. Um, as soon as your payment's made, um, you will be given instant access to begin the training. You've got some lessons that um, are going to be fired up in the queue. And then you'll be able to dive into the mindset training, and we're going to go through the, the whole process of the seven fundamentals. So once again, I just want to thank everyone for joining us on this webinar. I want to thank John for sharing his deal with us and his case study, showing you exactly the action that he took as well as the results. And, and once again, you know, if, if um, you have any questions about the F7X factor, feel free to message me um, when you get a chance. But I just want to say thank you for everyone that attended, and I hope that you had uh, received tremendous value from this event. And if you did, let me know. Like, let me know your, your thoughts and your comments, and I hope y'all got a lot out of this, and I hope to talk to all of you very soon. Take care.